Everybody, Jim here. Welcome back. I once again just returned home from a really awesome game hunting trip today. Uh, I went kind of to northwest Tokyo to an area called Hana Kogane, which uh, is a neighborhood I'd never been to before, but it was really close to another area called Kumegawa that I went to. Uh, maybe a couple of months ago with a friend of mine to do some game hunting and that went really well so when I noticed that there was another hard off only a few stations away uh, I decided that uh, today was going to be a good day with the nice weather and all to go and try out this new hard off and uh, I didn't go alone I was actually joined today once again by my good friend Sam uh, you may remember he was uh, with me when we went to Okachimachi for that really disastrous hard off trip uh, today, though, we had a much better time. There were consoles, there were games. That was all great, so we had a lot of fun together. We usually do have a lot of fun uh, when we're together, especially when we're just like digging through big piles of video games. Uh, so you get to see all of that in the video and come back at the end of the video as usual. We are going to go and take a look at my best finds of the day. Got some really cool games today. Uh, so come back at the end of the video for that. But with that being said, let's go game hunting. Awesome. Hello everybody, Jim here. How are you doing? Uh, just got off the train uh, in the neighborhood of Hana Kogane. And uh, my first time actually coming to this area, although it's really close to uh, a place we went game hunting recently. I went with my friend Jared to a neighborhood called Kumegawa. It's like only you're like two or three stops from here, uh, but unbeknownst to me at the time, there's another hard off uh, located not too far from it. So that's what we're gonna do today. It's a nice spring day, a little overcast, but not too bad, uh, but really windy. Uh, but Google Maps says this hard off is about one kilometer from the station, so it only take us about I don't know, maybe between 10 and 15 minutes to walk there. And when we get there, actually our good friend Sam is going to be waiting for us. And uh, you know, the last time he was with us, we had a pretty horrible experience uh, in Ueno at that cleaned out hard off. So maybe today uh, we can treat him and ourselves uh, to a much better game hunt. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go for a nice leisurely stroll and then we're gonna be at a brand new hard off, hopefully, filled with all kinds of games and consoles and that's what's coming up next. Okay, check this out. Nice big combination of things. We got a hobby off, we got a hard off, we got an off house. These are always my favorite. They're always uh, filled with stuff. So look, uh, from the outside, it looks like it's gonna have uh, all the stuff we're looking for. And uh, speaking of stuff we're looking for, Excuse me, sir. Do you come here often? Oh, oh hey, my God! Oh, oh. It's, it's, it's 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 me. It's, it's, Sam. Hey, it's the Sam. It's the 
Tikyo Sam. Oh my god. Oh my god. What are you doing here? You know, I was just, I wasn't following you uh -huh. or anything like that. Uh, but uh, I did uh, need to go to a hard off today, well, and uh, I just coincidentally well, you're in luck, buddy. came here. Cause look, it's hard. It's off. It's, it's got to be hard off. Oh my God! It's, so, it's what we do. Sam, what the last do. hard off we went to together, you were kind of a bad luck charm. Oh um, yeah, oh, I, it was me. Let's put that. I think all it was me, your huh? fault. I think we can say it's your fault. Yeah, um, obviously. Oh, my so fault. I'm thinking this place will probably, it definitely has to be better than the last one. I mean, it's bigger, and we're not in Central Tokyo, so that's all yeah. good points. And it's also the uh, force winds are kicking up. We might get blown away if we don't get inside this place right now to start looking for games. Sam. Are you ready? Uh, I was born ready. Okay, good. Then let's go. Yeah, let's do this. Tataka-i-no-fanfare-to-tomo-ni-bouken-no-tabi-ga-hajimaru. Getting started with some consoles. Who doesn't love some good old consoles? Uh, with 27.5 starting off for a Mega Drive 2 box. That's pretty steep as we're going to see. 27.5 for this PC engine. And that is expensive. That's, that's definitely <laughs> overpriced. Um, for this, a core graphics with the CD docking attachment and a controller 13.2. Okay, but then um, this what we're about. This blew me away. Seventy-seven hundred for just the deck of a PC Engine, and that again, that's overpriced, sir or ma'am, whoever priced that. Uh, here though, seventy-seven hundred for this boxed N64 with the uh, control pack. It says, and it's got the little expansion thing and everything. So that's actually okay. Uh, this kind of intrigued me. Something by Pioneer. It says it's an MSX PX V60. No idea what the hell that is. Someone more learned than me will have to inform me. And 16.5 for this 3DO. Uh, the FZ10 model, which I've had both. I've had the top loader and the front loader by Panasonic. Not not a bad console, really. Just uh, maybe didn't have all the support it needed. We got some more N64s and a 3DO FZ1. And it's 22000 so it's more expensive than the other one. And it comes with nothing. There's no AV, no controller, or anything like that. So again, uh, they're missing the mark. 13-2 on this particular Famicom twin. And again, I'm not seeing the hookups, the AV cable and everything. Uh, so I don't know what the hell's going on. This is a trend I've been noticing uh, lately, actually. That uh, some of the hard offs I go to is that while a lot of the more common games are priced well, between like 300 and 1,000 yen for like Famicom, Super Famicom, PS1, PS2, that kind of stuff. Uh, the consoles though, like this uh, Super Famicom Junior, kind of raggedy looking and they want 16,500 yen for it. Um, it seems like when it comes to the hardware, the, the pricing is just like all over the place. They don't really know what the hell they're doing. Uh, 4400 though for this PS1 with a user's manual and a very decorative PlayStation Christmas sock, I think is what that's supposed to be. Uh, so that's actually not too bad of a price on that. Like 35 bucks, you get a PS1 with a Christmas sock. There you go. Uh, 11000 though for this Dreamcast with a copy of Semen. And uh, 55 for that uh, Dreamcast, for whatever reason. And some uh, cool boxed fight sticks. But, um, yeah, I just don't know what the deal is with the... Uh, the hard offs being franchised, it's the prices, you never can tell. Uh, this a cool fight stick, it's an SVC Chaos. 
a branded fight stick for the PS2, I'm guessing. So that's kind of cool. And uh, this I actually thought was, was neat just because I don't come across too much Neo Geo stuff these days. Uh, one of the control pads used to be, like way back in the day, like over 10 years ago, it was pretty common at Hard Offs to come across like old AES games, some CD games, stuff like that. Uh, not these days though. Uh, Neo Geo becoming more and more elusive. 9900 for this Famicom. And this is something else I thought was really cool. It came with this, the SD Station, which as far as I can tell is like a peripheral that you could plug into your Famicom so you could use headphones with it. Uh, so you didn't annoy everyone else in the house with your Famicom, I guess. Um, some GameCubes, a lot of them over, just totally overpriced. I don't know what the hell's going on. 5500 for a Saturn deck, 77 for a, a gray model Saturn. Uh, so some of this was just nuts. Uh, we'll see some better pricing when we get, get to the games, but uh, the consoles were like, yeesh. Uh, Rolling Thunder, little mini arcade. That's kind of cool. It's 3,000 yen, and it looks like it's brand new. Uh, so that's kind of neat. And then they had some, some of the, you know, emulation things and clone consoles, whatevs. But, wait, there's more on the other side of the aisle. Uh, we had some games to choose from, so that's pretty cool, including a few box games here. In this case, some Famicom stuff. Kiki Kai Kai on the Famicom disc, which is pretty cool. I don't come across that so often. And we got Metroid and a couple other games. Famicom Disc, another, like, just something I'm coming across less and less often. Then a handful of GBA games. And then some Super Famicom games, including Dracula X Bonkers. Totally nuts. Sonic Wings. Love that game. Sonic Blast Man 2, which is cool. Don't come across that very much. Super Last Violence of Hammond. Turtles in Time. Live Alive, the original Sonic Blast Man. Uh, we got Zelda, we got Little Nemo, uh, we got uh, plenty of cool stuff in there. So yeah, and I'm just rambling on. Hyper Dimension, Rockman X3, uh, uh, Marvel Super Heroes for the Super Famicom, uh, a strategy guide for Gombody Goimon, which is cool. The Famicom cart version of Zelda with the official Zelda strategy guide for the first game, that's cool. The cart version is actually less common in Japan than you might think. And uh, Dragon Quest II with a guidebook, that's nice. That's always fun to see like stuff like that. I should probably get more into that, uh, finding and collecting guidebooks and things. 18.7 for a really ratty Akumajo Densetsu. That hurts. That hurts me in my heart, in the cockles of my heart. Maybe in the subcockle area. I don't know. But we got some Game Boy games here, including some Kunio, some Conan, some soccer. All you know, all the classics: Kunio, Conan, and soccer. That's all you need. We got some box Game Boy games, including uh, the original Dr. Mario for 500 yen. So for a boxed and complete Dr. Mario, 500 yen, that's actually, that's a good deal. That's a really good deal. So like I said, their consoles were like, yeesh, what the hell are you even thinking? But some of the games are priced pretty nice. Including we got 500 yen for Mario Land 2, one of my favorite Game Boy games. We got some Wario, we got some... Hamsters, finally. Yes, that's what this channel needs. More hamsters. We got Wario. We got Puyo Puyo for 300 yen. And that's a good deal. You know, I never talk about Puyo Puyo on this channel. What a rare occasion. What a treat. Uh, and a few more uh, Famicom disc games, including Mario Golf. The original is Super Mario Bros. 2. Which is a great game, but a hell of a hard one. And that's what she said. And uh, what else we got? Some uh, original Mario Brothers, just the manual. We got some GameCube games here, including some Mario Party and Mario. I believe we got Mario Kart, we got Mario Sunshine, and we got Mario Mario and Luigi Mario and the Mario this and the Mario that. If it says Mario, you bet your ass we got it. Uh, so there you go. And these GameCube games are priced pretty good too. Again, like 500 yen, 800 yen. And oh my god, we even get some Sega Pico. Finally. The Sega Pico has come back, so just uh, games, consoles, all kinds of stuff, and uh, whoa, a wild Sam appears. Sam, hey, how's it going? Well, look, look where we are. We're in this aisle full of game consoles. There's some actually pretty cool stuff here. Yeah. Uh, one thing I've never seen before. Check this out. So this Famicom 
is boxed. I've never seen this in my life. What is that? It says it's an SD station. You connect it to your Famicom and then you can put your headphones into it and play your Famicom with, with headphones on. Uh, I remember, thanks to Angry Video Game Nerd, there was the Top Gun game where you could shout into a, a thing. Is that it? Uh, no, no, this is, you're thinking about that headset where it was like, you could yell fire, fire, fire. Yeah, yeah. This, I think this is literally just a headphone jack that you can plug into the Famicom itself. Huh. And then it's, you can just listen. You don't have to annoy your family with your Famicom noises. Uh, you can just listen to it here. I love how, um... It's got controller, headphone, and a recorder recorder in and out that's I love interesting it. i love it how like it might be inflation or might be due to like the tourist influx coming in here but like like game cubes and stuff i remember like when i first came here you could get gamecube for like 20 bucks and that was with a controller these don't even come with a controller you have to buy the cables that, and the things that separately. was a very long time ago sam long long time Boy, ago. you can get your orange spice gamecube and three, three month, month guarantee one, three yeah. month so that's pretty pretty good i like how they have i'm more interested in because like you can get consoles pretty much anywhere but like look at this you can have like the densha to go controller like unless you're going to a very specialty shop that has a lot of stuff some big I love that like that some big ones but there's there's some cool stuff in this aisle i gotta say they got famicom twin down there they got pc engine yeah they got a little pricey some of this stuff i i wonder jim why do you think it's so pricey here it feels like is it just the times have changed or is it like it has to be because uh i think we discussed this hard offs are franchised so yeah. the prices aren't uniform so the prices here aren't reflective of what the prices might be at the next hard off like the vr headset wasn't this like 200 bucks or something at one point but it's like 60 80 whatever i don't think that's such a popular thing now you probably probably not not a fast fast mover no but i mean the funny thing is is that like with this stuff here like like if you go to a certain book off or hard off or whatever as long as you go to the junk aisle people say don't buy shit from the junk aisle but like this stuff if you just if you don't mind like possibly wasting ten dollars i remember i needed to buy a gamecube controller and uh, like only like two or three years ago and like I could get like a semi decent quality used one if I bought it separately for like 20 bucks But then I found a junk GameCube that had the controller and the GameCube and they both worked for 10 bucks so, Nice. Yeah. Well Sam, you can get yourself a PlayStation here I, With a Merry Christmas PlayStation stocking I'm thinking what that's what that oh, is. I love the design of these I never liked the minis. I always liked the how they're, they're quite precious my, my PS3 I had a PS3 that I gave to my friend in Osaka. You know what happened? He moved like two months later and he just left it there. I was like, ah. That's what happened to my our original NES when I was a kid. My brother uh, left it at a friend's house and then they moved away and took it. Oh my God. Um, but these are cool. We have Famicom Twins. These are always like fun to play with because you can use the disc system games and you can do the cartridges. We've got some 3DOs. There's 3D, oh! The front loader and the top loader. Were there any good games for 3D, oh? There were, there just weren't that many. I there. just think Zelda, you know? Zelda No, is that's the uh, the other thing, the or CDI. CDI, yeah. The 3DO had some actually pretty cool games on it, but uh, it had a lot of trash games too. And there's some other cool stuff. We got some PC engines over here. Yeah! And a, Mega Drive. a boxed Mega Drive Model 2 with its very decorative packaging. Uh, lots of cool consoles, but Sam, I think it might be time to uh, move on and go try to find some more games. What do you say? Yeah, let's go check out some more games, Jim. Games. Let's go look for games. All right, getting started uh, with some games and strap yourselves in, folks. This is going to be a, a longer segment because they had a lot of games, such as uh, GoGo 13 for 1,200 yen, which is like, okay, that, that was one of the more expensive of the loose carts I found here. But we got stuff here. We got Dig Dug. We got Dragon Quest. We got a bunch of Dragon Quest, actually, all the classics, Tetris, and we've got some other good stuff here like Hino Tori. That kind of thing. Some uh, Super Dodgeball for 800 yen. Love that game. 
And uh, what is that? Sky? What is that? Sky Shark? Sky Commander? Downtown Niketsu, which is uh, River City Ransom. That's always a classic. What else we got here? This. I have to uh, actually do a double take because I don't come across this game that much anymore, even though it's not an expensive or rare game especially. But uh, uh, Seikima 2, which uh, if you weren't aware, Seikima 2, a rock band here in Japan, big in the 80s. Uh, kind of a, one of those like visual bands like uh, Kiss or something. 500 for Super Spike V-Ball. That's pretty good. Considering exchange rates right now, we got Mario, we got Yoshi, Baseball Stars, all of that good stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I mentioned this earlier, but like I, I, as far as I know, the Hard Off, Hard Off is franchised. So that's why the price is between one video to the next, they're never the same. It's not uniform. And uh, from what I understand, um, the whoever I guess whoever's managing the hard off, uh, it's kind of up to them and their managers like how much to charge uh, for games and consoles and things. Rockman 3 for 1500 yen. So that's like 12 bucks. That's actually pretty reasonable for a copy of, of Rockman 3 as that becomes the Rockman games become uh, more and more in demand with collectors and things because you know it's one of those really recognizable classic series uh, as we move on to Super Famicom so as we're looking at these games you can see a lot of them are, are priced at like but be between 300 yen which is like I don't know like two dollars and 25 cents or something like you know we got you know Super Donkey Kong 3 other various things the Street Fighters and stuff that's all super cheap up to like a thousand yen which is like seven dollars and fifty cents right now so the games are not particularly expensive uh, 800 yen for samurai spirits and we got rockman 7 for a thousand yen so like 750 for a copy of rockman 7 that's actually pretty good that's that's reasonable i think most people would agree that's reasonable but compare that to the prices we just saw on some of those consoles like multiple hundreds of dollars for consoles that aren't even that uncommon or uh, weren't even in that great of shape. We've got like uh, Art of Fighting here, Space Invaders, Super Donkey Kong, that stuff's all 300 yen. A thousand yen for Aladdin, uh, which actually isn't bad. 750 for a copy of Aladdin is pretty good. We've got some Mickey, we've got some Yu Yu Hakusho, we've got all this good stuff. And again, most of those cards, 300 yen. Not bad at all. We got a complete copy of Mickey Mania for what three thousand yen, which is pretty good. We've got some of these Sailor, or at least yeah, some of the Sailor Moon games, Sailor Moon S, and the uh, one of the uh, uh, puzzle games. Not sure which one. Uh, Mother Two, aka Earthbound, Final Fight Two for five thousand yen. That's actually more than uh, the book off I was at recently. It was like twenty five. It was like half the price there. Um, we got some other stuff here. You want to play some cards? Unlucky at love, lucky at cards. That's not me at all. Uh, what is that? Like 18 for Star Fox Complete. And uh, the condition was pretty good on some of that stuff, too. And we have a boxed copy of Aladdin. Again, looking pretty good for 3,000 yen, which is, I want to say, like, what, $24 right now? Not, not too bad, I would say. And here's always the test. Mario Kart, what are they going for? Uh, 1,000 yen. For a complete copy of Mario Kart, so like 750 for Mario Kart. So that's, I say usually that's the indicator of where the prices are going to be. Look at the Mario Karts and that too. Look at the Dragon Ball Zs. If they're charging 800 for Super Butoden 2, then that's okay. The prices are probably going to be uh, acceptable. Poyo Poyo. There's Chrono Trigger. There's all kinds of stuff. That's something that's always worth keeping in mind. Is the uh, the RPGs? Even if I mean you know get. I guess a little comfortable reading Japanese and you can buy all the RPGs you ever wanted for like a few bucks a piece but we got good stuff here 300 yen for all these loose N64 carts 500 for the Mario there but like Smash Brothers Diddy Kong Racing DK64 Wave Race all this stuff is just a few bucks uh, so if you're just like starting to put together a, uh, an N64 collection and you don't mind picking up loose carts you're not gonna have to pay very much to at least get started to get like your first 10 games or something uh, 800 yen for some Bomberman okay and we got some Mahjong we got some Mario parties we got some boxed games uh, 500 yen 
for DK64. That's really good. And 1500 for a boxed Star Fox 64. Also, not too objectionable. And Wave Race. Classic game. What is that, like 500 yen? For a complete wave race so you can spend 300 yen to get it loose or just an another 200 yen and you've got a complete copy and that's pretty cool and 1200 yen for a boxed uh smash brothers but don't smash your brothers that's that's not cool a uh, thousand yen for some gambar at goimon we like that. We always like to come across the Goy Mons. But they had other cool stuff. They had, I think they had like Poyo Poyo 64. They had some more box games. You know, all the stuff you'd ever want, really. Uh, some 360 games. Gundam Musou Catherine for 800 yen. Uh, really great game. And 800 yen, that's not so bad, right? That's like six bucks. You get yourself a copy of Catherine. Um, yeah, so like the Xbox 360, kind of a weird, you know history in Japan. It didn't sell very much, very well and kind of just threw games out there for it. Oblivion Resoft. I wonder if that's the Game of the Year edition. That's the one I had played. Um, but yeah, like just weird stuff ended up on 360 out here a little bit. Uh, all those bullet hell shooters and uh, a lot of dating sims and just stuff like that. You know, things that I'm not too particularly interested in. I mean, I love the bullet hell shooters, but the dating sims I'm not so hot on. Uh, I bypassed some of the other stuff, the things I'm less familiar with. We're going to move on to PS2. Um, but the way they ordered everything, like their PS2 and PS1 games, is the way I don't like it, which is alphabetical. So now I got to go like digging through alphabetical order games. We got like Eco and other cool stuff like that. Some Itadaki Street. Uh, those are, uh, you know, usually pretty fun, kind of like the game of life. Initial D, special stage, 1500 yen. And Universal Studios, I thought this was interesting just because uh, my buddy Eric apparently does the voice of Woody Woodpecker in that game. And I had no idea, so when I asked him about it, I was like, that's crazy. I'm like, did they have to do like a mod thing on your voice? He was like, nope, I just did it. And then he did his Woody Woodpecker for me, and it was pretty cool. Um, but there's some Gundam Seed, some Fate, Melty Blood Act, Cadenza for 500 yen. Uh, this game is still super cheap on the PS2. Actress, again, is more expensive, but Act Cadenza, super affordable. And there's Clonoa 2 down there. Although, I just recently picked up the Clonoa uh, HD collection on the Switch. And I've been having a ton of fun with that. Usually, though, I like a PS2 section that is uh, divvied up by genre. That makes it easier for me. So I can just go straight to the fighting section, straight to the shoot 'em up section. Or in this case, straight to the Naruto section, because look at this, jeez! How many Naruto games does one console need? Well, in the case of the PS2, a lot. We got some Haji, uh, Hajime no Ippo, those are cool, but this... This was kind of my find of the day here, spoilers. Uh, for 4,500 yen, Hokuto no Ken! By Arc System Works, yes, that Hokuto no Ken. Uh, in the same vein as Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue and other ARC classics, Hokuto no Ken is awesome. Uh, so I left that there. That was that was like one of my definite buys when I come back to do like my my sweep, my shopping sweep, where I actually uh, you know pick up all the stuff that I'm gonna buy and take home with me. Uh, the original Armored Core on the PS1, uh, and I can't tell you how much fun me and my friends had with that one back in the day. Uh, we played. Quite a lot of that Armored Core, and then Air Management, which doesn't seem quite as exciting as Armored Core. <laughs> I don't know, would you like to manage an airport? Because I would not. Arc the Lad, IQ Final, uh, whatever the hell that is, and ooh, now you want to talk kart racing. Forget your Mario Karts, your Diddy Kongs, your Crash Teams. You want whatever the hell that was. Actual kart racing, people in go-karts, because that's got to be more fun than a fantasy car racing game. Are you picking up on my star sarcasm? My tharcasm? My tharcasm is being laid on pretty thick, don't you think? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I did not pick up that kart racing game, though. Although I probably should have. I'm saying all this now, but it probably is fun. It probably would be more fun, like a realistic kart racer, where you have actual people in go-karts, and they, they, throw, they throw shit at each other. This, oh my goodness. 
There's shrimp on the cover. I don't know why there's a bunch of shrimp on the cover. It's a Mahjong game. Maybe you're, maybe winner gets shrimp dinner. I don't know. Uh, if you win at Mahjong, you get a trip to Bubba Gump Shrimp. Which, uh, they have Bubba Gump Shrimps out here. There's at least a couple of them. I haven't been to any of them yet. I mean, I don't know. Who cares? It's Bubba Gump Shrimp. What am I? I'm, I'm not even talking about the games at this point. There's <laughs> Jumping Flash. There's Summon Knight. Uh, there's Logic. Not something, some, not to got Logic. I guess it's a, um, I don't know, some kind of puzzle game. Uh, this, I think these are like the original Dynasty Warriors, right? When it was a fighting game. It wasn't a, uh, a hack and slasher. Uh, Chocobo Collection. These are always popular. 1,200 yen. But it's got three games in it. Um, which, Im most importantly, it's got, uh, the Chocobo Racing game. So that's fun. Tenchu! Which I think that's one of the updated versions they released later. Always love Tenchu. Tekken 2! For 300 yen, an absolute classic. Dino Crisis, also 300 yen. That's nice. 300 yen for a copy of Dino Crisis. That's a good deal on that. You're spending like what, two dollars and 25 cents on a copy of Dino Crisis. Good luck doing that uh, anywhere else but Japan. Uh, some biohazards. Some this I thought kind of interesting. Something meant to be played with the pocket station. I personally, I do like the pocket station. I thought it was pretty cool and it was a shame it wasn't released in the US because I remember seeing it in little uh, demo footage things and loving it or loving the look of it Virtua Pro Wrestling uh, this was released in America as WCW versus the world and uh, that was a pretty good game and it's being sold for 500 yen uh, yeah I back in the day when I was like 10 11 12 I was quite the wrestling fan uh, this pretty cool get the license uh, I think it's a game that literally teaches you how to drive. Like teaching you the rule of the road and uh, everything you need to pass a driving test. Which I've never taken a driving test in Japan. I haven't actually driven in quite a long time. But I'm sure it's uh, a, a little slice of hell. 1500 yen for Rockman X4. That's okay. We got some One Piece and we got some Rockman X3. With some damage to it so it's like a thousand yen. Um, yeah, driving in Tokyo must be an absolute nightmare. The Ru uh, Ruroni Kinshin games, 500 yen for this one, the, uh, the RPG. There are actually two Ruroni Kinshin games on the PlayStation. There is an RPG, and then there is this one directly next to it, a 3D fighter. And neither of them is particularly good. I'd rather play the 3D fighter just because I'm more of a fighting fan. I don't really have the patience to get deep into a Ruroni Kenshin RPG. But even, you know, the fighter is not that great. Doki Doki Pretty League, finally. Uh, a game where I guess you manage a women's baseball team? I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, this, how heartbreaking is this? Look at the sun fading. On this poor X-Men vs. Street Fighter. What have you done to my baby? <laughs> uh, I'm going to have nightmares about that now. Uh, Biohazard 3, Last Escape, 6,000 yen. Kiss my ass. Virtue on 500, though. Okay, that's fine. Uh, they didn't have a lot for the Dreamcast. Dynamite Decca 2, that's pretty cool. 4,000 yen. Uh, I like that, uh, but that's another trend that I'm noticing lately too. Console prices have been kind of erratic in hard offs, or at least the ones I've been going to recently. And uh, good luck finding like Dreamcast, Saturn, PC Engine, all the more highly collectible stuff. There's not going to be that much of it. Vigilante 8 Second Offense. Love it. Love that game. I'm a, I'm a Vigilante 8 fan. Uh, series I wouldn't mind seeing come back instead of just keep on rehashing us some twisted metal some vampire hunter a thousand yen so that's kind of a bad sign that they don't really know how to price their um their Saturn games that should be more of a 500 yen game uh, but we got the game where you can manage a convenience store so I guess that even evens things out what the hell is wrong with me today like maybe I need to drink some more water I'm like being compelled to lisp uh, this, though, thought was pretty cool. Got a copy of Darius 2, but it's 6,000 yen. So it's in the neighborhood of like 47, 48 bucks for it. Uh, which is not cheap. It's not like the worst ever, but it's definitely not like reasonable by any stretch. Ninku. 
a Japan exclusive 2D fighter for the Saturn, and not a particularly good one. You can bypass that. Nights into Dreams, though, always a classic. I am quite the fan of Nights into Dreams. Uh, so if you can find that for not too much. This, Sakura Wars Columns for a thousand yen. Uh, that's actually a good price on that. And Sakura Wars Columns, it's fun. It's Columns, but with Sakura Wars characters. Uh, so you can't uh, can't argue too much with that. Especially if you're a Columns fan. Uh, now we come down here, we have a handful of Mega Drive games. Including Afterburner 2. Uh, the Mega Drive version of Darius 2, which we had just seen on the Saturn. It's actually cheaper to pick up the Mega Drive version. And we have a few PC Engine games here. Uh, not too much, including, uh, was it, Legendary Axe and both R-Type 1 and R-Type 2. But everything here is like 3,000 yen, 4,000 yen. Um, even if it's not warranted, just because, yeah, PC Engine, right? This is not Nintendo or PlayStation, so it's collectible, right? I think that's the logic going on in a lot of places here. Valkyrie no Densetsu, great game, 6,000 yen. Uh, so, spoilers, I didn't actually take any of the PC Engine games with me today. I think that's the logic of some of these managers. Hey, look, it's got this chick on it, it's PC Engine. It's gotta be worth something. Anyway. Uh, let's go have a chat. Hey, let's go see what Sam is up to. Why not? So, Sam, they got a lot of games in this aisle. What is that in your hand, sir? Oh, uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. I never ended up playing the third one. Oh, okay. Because, it, like, you know, it took for a... That's the thing. If you want me to care, don't take ten years to put out your game, you know? I, I only played the first one, but I, I can say the first Kingdom Hearts is one of the only RPGs I finished in both English and Japanese, so... Dude, props. That. Um, this, though... Dude, I... I need to get past you because this is what I was happy to find. Hokuto no Ken yeah. by Arc System Works, published by Sega. And it's a fighting game. It is. It's very similar to their other games like Guilty Gear and Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, I remember this one Blue. because it looks like anime. Like it's actually like yes. not cell shaded, but what do you call it? It looks it, like uh, it, you're it, playing it, anime. Yeah, it does look like hand drawn cell animation. It's really good looking game. Great soundtrack. Super fun. And 4,500 yen is actually pretty good on this. So yeah. I'm taking this home with me today. Dude, they have so many fun games, like Ape Escape 3. I never got to play the second or third one, but this is, like, in this one, I'm in the middle of this. I started this, I didn't get far. I got, like, a couple hours into this. This is actually really fun. I I'm like the... big fan of the second one, actually. On have you play played through. this one at all? Not that one. I played the second one to death. For to me, hell and back. For me, it's like the storyline is important for an RPG, but they all kind of blend together, you know? But it's like, if it has a good battle system, like, oh, like this, it's so fun. You never go wrong with Star Ocean. Yeah, we dude. got we got all these N64 games over here. Oh I know, snap! I know that you're an N64 guy oh, at I heart. I love my N64. I have I have this game, the Mahjong game, because I bought it for like 20 cents. I don't even <laughs> don't even know how to play I don't Mahjong. Know how to play Mahjong. Uh, all the classics: Star Fox, Super Mario, yes. uh, Smash Bros, Diddy Kong. Oh, the man. better racing game, the better kart racer, Diddy Kong Racing. I thought it was pretty good, yeah. There's lots of good stuff here. Lots of Super Famicom as well. You look, can get some Sailor Moon, look some at Mickey, these Mania. In the box, Mickey Mania. See, see, well, I don't understand. Like in America, they're like, we can't put anime on the box, even though it's an anime cover, because it won't sell well. I'm like, look wow. at this. Look at the quality of this picture. How you know? times have changed. Even if you're not into like Sailor Moon, like just look at how, look at that artwork. Elaborate. You know? No kid could walk past the shelf and not look at that box and be like, what is this? I mean, look at that. Like, I don't even know what it looked like in America, but like, look, it's like Dragon Ball Z artwork. It didn't look like anything because that one, unfortunately, well, the, that version was not released in America. But we have uh, just so much stuff to peruse. I mean, you're going to get your PS4 game. I'm definitely getting this, but I need to uh, go get my basket and fill it up because I got to buy a bunch of games, I think. Look at, look at this. It's, uh, oh, you poor sun faded baby. Yeah, sun faded game case, man. Look at all that. All of it's gone. That's too bad. That's a great game, too. Yeah, dude. Oh. Anyway, let's, uh, what do you say we do our final little bit of perusing and shopping, get our games, and then get the hell out of here? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's go do it. Family computer game, Hokuto no Ken 2. Power up した Hokuto to Shinken ni, kimi wa kateru ka? Hokuto no Ken 2, 4月17日新発売!
All right, so that was pretty fun, eh? Yeah, <laughs> you know, they, uh, I love coming to places like this because it's like, it's usually hit or miss if you're in Tokyo, but this place, it had some good deals. I was actually a little bit surprised. The game section was actually really small. But I, at the very least, we can say this was way better than what we, what happened in uh, Ueno at oh, the Okatsumachi yeah. place. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I actually picked up a bunch of really cool games today. I'm going to show them off at home for my finds of the day. And uh, Sam, thanks as always for hanging out. You, you made the video just that much better. Just oh by yeah, being Jim. Here, buddy. It was all me, man. It's all and, me. Uh, so that's it for the hard off out here in Hana Kogane. Pretty cool little neighborhood. If I do say so myself. Yeah. And uh, I guess that'll do it. So we will part ways and then I'll go home and show off these kick ass games. Say goodbye, Sam. Goodbye, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go, everyone. Did I not tell you uh, that there were quite a lot of consoles and games in that place? Uh, fun day today, good day of game hunting. I mentioned it in the video already, but that particular hard off, it was like. Their, their consoles were, for the most part, pretty significantly overpriced. And then for their games, they were right on the money. They were priced pretty good. And I just feel like a lot of the, maybe the people in charge of pricing at these hard-offs, um, there's the general idea they have that like old hardware is particularly like collectible or maybe should be more expensive. And then when it comes to games, um, there's a general understanding of that, okay, like Famicom and Super Famicom and PlayStation and PlayStation 2, there's a ton of that stuff floating around, so maybe it's not quite as valuable, whereas when they have something that maybe they can see is it's less common for them to actually get those in, and maybe they're more collectible, stuff like PC Engine, Saturn, and uh, Dreamcast, uh, things of that nature, uh, they tend to price them higher. So that's just the trend I've noticed again. Uh, I found out that hard offs and book offs and things, these are all franchised, so the prices are not uniform. Uh, so if you're going to go to hard off, go to a few of them, shop around, and uh, you might be surprised. And I'm pretty sure the same thing, same thing applies to Sudagaya, because I go, I've been to like a bunch of different Sudagaya locations in Tachikawa, in Ikebukuro, in Akihabara, and the prices again are not uniform. Um, they vary from place to place. So if you have the time and the uh, you know, the desire, uh, shop around a bit. But uh, I did pick up, uh, I think I picked up maybe like 30 games today and the uh, the final tally came out to about 33,000 yen, which um, that ratio of like games to money is a little more than I usually spend, but that's because I picked up some, some of the more expensive games on top of uh, a whole bunch of cheaper, like more common games that cost me like 300 yen, 500 yen a piece. Um, but we're gonna take a look at what I think my best finds of the day were. These are uh, games that for the price I paid for them um, and for how good they are and the quality that they, uh, the shape they're in, I, I think these were my best finds of the day. Uh, we're gonna get started with, for the Super Famicom, uh, a game I really like, one of the better shoot 'em ups on the console. Uh, picked up that copy of Sonic Wings. And if you've never played Sonic Wings, it's by Video System, but a lot of the uh, staff that worked on Sonic Wings eventually uh, started Psycho. So if you've played Psycho shoot 'em ups like Strikers 1945 and Gunbird, uh, this is very similar to those. You have a few different ships to choose from. Each of them has a unique uh, shot, and you can uh, you collect power ups to power up your main weapon. You collect your super bombs. And I believe like the first handful of stages are in random order, so it's not always the exact same playthrough every time. And uh, as you go from one stage to the next, depending on like what the layout is, uh, they'll get more and more difficult as you progress. But there are a whole bunch of different difficulty settings too, so these can be, you can set them way up high to give yourself a really hard time, or set the difficulty down to give yourself an easy time. I don't quite recall in Sonic Wings, but I know in like Strikers and games like that, there are like eight different difficulty levels with like very hard at the high end and like monkey or baby at the low end. So pretty much anyone can play these. They're really good like starter shoot 'em ups because they play really solid and you can adjust them to where they're not too brutally difficult. And on top of that, it's just fun. Uh, Super Famicom, there are quite a few shoot 'em ups on the console, but it's not really known for having like the best games in the genre. But I would say games like Sonic Wings 
and Space Megaforce, Axelay, Gradius 3, um, R-Type 3, those are for me like the, the top notch on the system, the best ones on the console. So Sonic Wings is an all around solid shooter, uh, controls really well, it plays really well, it's fun. And the graphics and sound are really decent too. So this is one of the better shooters on the console. And I was happy to pick it up for, I think it was about like, what, like 5,000 yen, which it's usually maybe closer to like seven or eight when I see it out in the wild. So I was happy to pick this one up, Sonic Wings, really good game if you haven't played it before. And uh, somebody's gonna be happy to get that. Also on the Super Famicom, picked up a boxed and complete game. It is Mickey Mania. And I think I paid 3,000 yen for this, so probably in the neighborhood of like 24 bucks for a complete copy uh, in decent shape with manual and everything. And the cartridge was really clean too, but I really like this game. This is probably my favorite of all the 16-bit Mickey games because there are some pretty good ones. There's like Castle of Illusion, uh, World of Illusion. There's, I think, uh, the Japanese exclusive one. It's like Mickey at Tokyo Disney where you have the water balloons and stuff. Uh, that's pretty fun, but I just like... Um, the, the gameplay in Mickey Mania is, is solid. It's a pretty straightforward platformer. Um, you can uh, collect marbles and you can use those to attack enemies or you can jump on enemies' heads when you run out of marbles, which uh, happens from time to time. Um, but I, I like the gameplay and I especially like um, sort of how the game plays out where it's like a history of Mickey Mouse. So each different section of the game is taken from one of the classic Mickey Mouse um, animated features, with uh, the final stage being the Prince and the Pauper, which I really liked as a kid. We had that on VHS. Um, but you get Steamboat Willie, and you get the, the Haunted House, which is really fun. You get my personal favorite, which is the uh, Jack and the Beanstalk stage, where everything is giant, and uh, you get to bounce around on like gelatin dishes, which I always thought was really fun. Um, so yeah, I like the visuals in this game. Looks really great, really smooth animation, and great uh, detailed character sprites and everything good soundtrack as well, and just an overall solid, fun game. Again, my favorite of the 16-bit Mickey games. And for what I paid for it, uh, totally worth it for this uh, boxed clean copy here. It is Mickey Mania with the nice lime green, published by Capcom in Japan, actually. I think Capcom published like most of the Mickey games uh, here and otherwise. Uh, and then finally, I think I already mentioned it when I did the game hunting portion. Uh, but my find of the day, this game is awesome. Anytime I come across it, if the price is right, I'm going to pick it up. Um, because anyone that collects uh, Japanese PS2 games, this is one that's kind of at the top of their list because it's, it's just so awesome. Uh, Hokuto no Ken. Uh, yes, indeed. Fist of the North Star on the PS2. Published by Sega. Developed by Arc System Works. The Arc System Works of Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue and... Uh, Dragon Ball Fighters fame. Uh, they sure do know how to make a damn good fighting game. And this is honestly one of my favorite uh, ARC fighters ever just because it's so awesome. I like Fist of the North Star just in general. I like that combination of like uh, Mad Max but with like crazy martial arts and, and hyper violence and everything. Um, so I've always liked this series. And it's a series that, despite how awesome it is, a lot of the Fist of the North Star games that have ever been made were not any good. You think it would be really difficult to screw up Fist of the North Star. You got a guy that just punches people and their heads explode. So just make that into a game and make it as well as you can. But just somehow the formula was, uh, was never quite right for a really long time, with the exception of maybe like one or two games. Uh, this, though, turned it into a fighting game, take all those cool characters from the series, Really big, detailed character sprites, beautiful, um, almost like a, a, a hand-drawn animation style, which again, Arc System Work is uh, pretty well known for with like Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue and stuff. Always really beautiful graphics, great uh, character designs and stages, um, lots of animation and detail back there, and just like cool um, details on like the attacks. Each character has their signature attacks from the show. And you can do these like really like there's super combos, but then you can do these like fight ending, almost like fatality moves again, very akin to a game like Guilty Gear. And they're great. They're all taken again, lifted directly from the series. So for example, uh, Kenshiro can do his uh, his Shakuretsuken, his 100 crack 
thing where he, he gives a hundred hit combo to finish off the fight. Uh, unfortunately, the characters' heads do not explode in this game. That would have been pretty cool. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's not, I guess, not meant to be Mortal Kombat, even though the series is, like, super violent. Um, but this game is great. Not a huge character roster, but pretty much all the characters you would want from the show are in the game. And each character plays unique from the others. There aren't any clones in this game. And it's just extremely fun. Fast-paced, kick-ass fighting game based on one of my favorite anime properties of all time, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's Hokuto no Ken by Arc System Works. And that'll do it, everybody. Those are my finds of the day. Uh, so let me know down in the comments, have you played any of these games and what do you think of them? And what are some games on your wish list? What's maybe, uh, in particular, some games you would like to import from Japan? Would you like games like Hokuto no Ken in your uh, PS2 collection? Let me know because I like to go down there and uh, read the comments and get all the feedback and all that good stuff. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. It was a fun day of game hunting. Went to a nice neighborhood I'd never been to before and hung out with uh, a good friend of mine and got some cool games in the process. Uh, so always a good time when we can do that. So thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.